Florida Panthers have brought in a lot of new faces this offseason, but does that make them a legit contender in the Eastern Conference? What's going on everybody? I hope you guys are having a great time. My name is Ikira. This is the hockey channel for hockey fans to be in the hockey nation. And today we're going to be talking about the Florida Panthers and whether they're a legit team to be scared of in the Eastern Conference. Now, as we know, they've made a lot of offseason decisions by bringing in their number one goaltender, Bobrovsky, by bringing in the top four defenseman, Anton Stroman, and adding a couple of depth forwards up front in Brett Connolly and Noah Chari. Now, whether those decisions that they've made in the offseason pay off for them is going to be to be seen because we don't know how the whole team is going to play together so we can only speculate at this point but you know there's some legit thought out there that the florida panthers look like a contender heading into next season but before we get into any other details about this florida panthers team make sure to consider subscribing to the channel for more hockey content liking the video at the end if you enjoyed the video uh, hitting the bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos on this channel as well as sharing the video on twitter facebook instagram or wherever else you go out there on social media last year they finished with a record of 36 32 and 14 which was only good enough for 86 points they finished fifth in the atlantic division the coach was bob bugner but he got fired right after the season ended and it was kind of a disappointing way that he uh, ended up leaving the organization just because a lot of the blame went towards him. And I don't blame him for what he did with the team because I thought he did some pretty good things for them while he was a coach. Their goals for was a 267, which was ninth. Their goals against, which, uh, which was 28th, was a 280. But the main reason it was a 28th was because of the goaltending. And I think if they kept Bob around, I don't think it would have been such a huge difference between him and Quenville, but I could be wrong average for points this year was 91 they only had 86 so they were a below average team by going off the stats their goals for was 20 higher than the league average their goals against was 29 more than the league average so like i already mentioned the goaltending played a huge part in it their power play was a 26.7 percent which is about 7 percent higher than the league average at 19.7 percent their penalty kill was above league average as well at 81.3 uh, the league average for that was 80.2 and their goaltending really suffered because their goaltending percentage was 891 compared to the league average 905 so if that goaltending really made a difference for them this year they could have made the playoffs and if you take a look at the, the players that they had up front and defensively this really wasn't a bad team at all now that we've went through the stats for the whole team, let's talk about the team a little bit and those new additions. Obviously, Bobrovsky was brought in to be the new starting goaltender. Uh, Roberto Luongo ended up retiring. Then they traded away that James Reimer's contract to, to Carolina uh, in exchange for Scott Darling. And then they bought out that contract of Scott Darling as well. So they kind of made a one and one And uh, it looks like Montebo will be the backup for Bobrovsky next year, which, you know, he's a young goaltender. I believe he's... 25 years of age he's coming from quebec so there is still some potential with him there uh to become something more but we'll see um they also got a goaltender this past season uh at the draft table that looks to be very promising he has a absolutely excellent work ethic and looks like he's going to be the next you know maybe starting goaltender for them in the future defensively they made one strong addition that was anton stroman who came over from tampa uh, he played a pretty solid shutdown role, but he's been kind of inconsistent in terms of his health because last year he only played like 20-something games in the regular season, ended up getting injured for most of the year and never came back for playoffs. And, you know, he's going to be a pretty, you know, key opponent to their team because I think they really need another top four defenseman. And now their top four looks like Yandel, Ekblad, Matheson, and Strawman, which makes for a really, really solid top four. Obviously, there's no really game-breaking defenseman there, but Aaron Ekblad could become that. He's still growing as a defenseman. I remember a defense would take longer to develop. Well, offensively, they didn't really make much changes other than bringing in Brett Connolly for the top six. He signed for four years at 3.5 million. He came over from Washington, had a career year and uh, he was able to get the contract that he wanted. And they also brought in Noah Chari from the Boston Bruins, who was a key opponent to their bottom six. And he's obviously pretty much easily replaceable for Boston because they do have other guys that they could have played in his spot last year. But it felt like, you know, he was the energy guy that they needed on the line. And now that he's gone, they would need to replace his ad. 
Now that we've covered pretty much every topic for the Florida Panthers, I wanted to go ahead and give my thoughts obviously on the question that I asked at the start of the video, which was, are they a legit threat in the Eastern Conference? And right now, just based off looking at the roster, I would say yes, because with Wawrowski being a franchise slash elite goalie, depending on how you want to rank him in the league, he could be a top five goalie. He could be the best goalie in any night. If you take a look at their defense, that's a pretty underrated defense with some defensive structure there with guys like Matheson, Ekblad, and uh, Strowman being very versatile. Yando is more of an offensive defenseman, so you have that there. Uh, you also have a pretty solid top six in Uyghur, and uh, maybe Pissig will get in there as well. So we'll see. This is going to be a pretty solid defensive core. And their forward group can score a lot of goals. Last year, you've gained that enough Barkov and Huberto combined for the most goals i believe of any first line in the nhl so that was pretty amazing to see and um, i think this team uh, is going to surprise a lot of people next year some people are still predicting them to miss the playoffs but i feel like they will come in and they will do what they have to do but if you're just taking a look at um this roster realistically then i'm not sure that they're a legit threat so if we're talking based off of predictions and just speculation then yeah they're definitely a legit threat based off of the roster but the chemistry and how those guys settle in and thinking realistically about the roster i would probably most likely say no right now because we don't know how the new additions are going to affect the team and whether that's going to help them get over the top or uh is it going to just detriment the team once again all right, so this is the end of the video guys thank you so much for watching this video if you did enjoy make sure to consider subscribing to the channel for more hockey content liking the video at the end if you did enjoy the video hitting the bell button so you don't miss any of my future content on this channel i'm gonna be bringing a lot more hockey content soon and don't forget to also share the video online and social medias like twitter facebook instagram or what other else social media you use and my name is Ikira. this is the hockey nation i'll catch you guys also